Hey, good evening. It's Monday, July 15th, and welcome back to another week of Everyday Talk 24 7. As you can see, it's sunset here. We just had another th thunderstorm pass through, so the weather is really pleasant for now, and some of the extreme heat has moved off. It's a perfect time to talk about how wisdom is practical. I had a really great comment from one of our regular viewers who asked when I talked on Friday about the difference between wisdom and rules, could I give some practical examples? So tonight I'm going to attempt to do that for you. We're going to be looking at wisdom as a weapon. It's the weapon of the Spirit to bring about God's peace and play it in our life. And here's an example. We make a rule, and the, <clears throat> the rule is we tell our teenager that if you do these things, one, two, three things, and you cut the lawn on Saturday morning, then <clears throat> you'll be able to do <clears throat> what it is that you want to do. Whatever they've requested that you do. They go out with some friends um, and you want to grant them that, but they have to do these three things plus cut the lawn on Saturday morning. So you made a rule. You think it's a fair rule. You're trying to work with them, give them a chance to um, quote unquote show that they're trustworthy. And then you'll grant the privilege that they're asking. They agree to it at the time. And it's an, it's an activity that you're happy with them doing. And so we've got a rule in place, <clears throat> a, rule, <clears throat> a rule that everybody agrees with. It's, it's a good rule, it's a good thing. So everybody's happy, right? Well, then we come to um, Saturday morning and the grass isn't cut. And your teenager is uh, unhappy, kind of brooding, not doing well. And they're saying, hey, you know, I'm not, you know, it's kind of rough. I'll, I'll cut the grass later. Um, is it okay if I still go with my friends? So you, <clears throat> you're going to deploy your rule. And you say, no, we agreed that you do these three things, which you did, that's good. But then the fourth thing was, you're going to cut the grass. And, but, but, Dad, I, I couldn't. There was just something, we made a rule, that's fair, you agreed to it. You're going to have to learn in life there's consequences and you have to deal with them. The teenager is unhappy and kind of storms off. That's a rule. But it's a rule that has missed the point of showing your children what God is like. Because you see, you and I, so often, we don't keep the things that we decide we want to do. We may bail on a decision and not, not, not do the right thing, but then want to go ahead and do it anyway. So there's another dimension to look at this. Proverbs 15, verse 1 and 2, verse 1 particularly says, a soft answer turns away wrath. It soothes wrath. So this teenager is upset. So me coming back with, hey, well, this is the rule, this is what we did. It's not really a soft, gentle answer. That's just holding out for the letter of the, of the law, the rule, if you will. Then Proverbs 16, in the section from verses 20 to 24, highlights the idea that pleasant words promote instruction. And verse 22 of chapter 16 says this. It says that this way of wisdom is a fountain of life. You want that for your teenager. You want them to be able to grasp life. So you want to speak kindly and pleasantly to them. And then we're going to pick up, Paul works with these principles. And again, in Ephesians 4.29, he says, Don't let any unproductive, rotten words come out of your mouth, but only what's helpful for building others up according to their need. So suppose we talk to your teenager along the lines of, Hey man, I can see you're troubled about something. Can you help me work through this? I want to understand. I want to, I want to know what's happening. 
Can you explain to me what, why this is challenging you, why this is hard? And you're not on your case at all. You say, I, I want to be able for you to go this afternoon. Just help me work through this. Well, things may be broken and you can't make any progress at all, but maybe following this type of approach, your son looks at you and says, Dad, well, I appreciate you trying to work with me. Let me explain something to you about why this is hard, why it's difficult. Now you've got an opportunity to engage from your heart to their heart. And we're not after about performance, after about drawing them closer to God. So you've deployed wisdom. The gentle, soft answer, it eases and pushes away wrath. The pleasant words draw conversation out with something that's more precious than that. And then you see Paul's application where I only want to say things that are going to build up my teenager or my wife, or my friends, or husband, or whatever. I want to build them up so that they're blessed by it. I don't want them to walk away thinking, hey, we're shut down. Rather, you're providing an opportunity by deploying wisdom instead of a rule, by drawing them out, getting them to talk to you, and maybe even result in you letting them go anyway. We have to be wise, we have to be careful, but you see what's happening here. We've not held on to a rule, which Isaiah warns against, Jesus warns against, Paul warns against. These rules will destroy us. They're not what God has in mind. But we've opened up life and we're dealing with our child the way that God deals with us. That's wisdom. Wisdom brings life. Rules may bring compliance, but they won't bring life. So that's an example of the weapon of wisdom being deployed that actually builds up rather than just results in something, well, you didn't do this, we don't do that. God has something better for us than that. As you can see, the sun has gone uh, behind the clouds, so it's a good time for me to stop. Thank you so much for being here, and uh, again, please give me some feedback. It's so helpful, and I, and I want this to really make an impact for all of us. And uh, it's such a blessing to be with you, Lord willing, we'll talk to you tomorrow.